And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with the Game Boy Geek. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we are going to be city council members who've just been given a brand new city from the government, and it's our job to build this city up, to be successful, to make sure there's not enough, there's not too much crime, there's not too much pollution, we're working together, yet we're being approached by special interest groups uh, that have our ear that will give us some points and some things for doing what they want to be done. That's a semi-cooperative game uh, where you're really just looking out for yourself. Very interesting, called City Council from Golden Egg Games. It's uh, three to five players uh, with a variant of two players. Uh, takes about uh, 90 minutes to play. Let's jump on in, I'll show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. At the beginning of Sydney Council, you get to pick your color. You take a pawn, a building color, and a black voting token of your color. We start with the committee phase. And in the committee phase, randomly at the beginning of the game, someone was assigned the election committee, and then that person assigned the different players to the different committees that are available. Now, this is also player order in the round, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, all the way through all the turns in the round. And uh, each person now gets to do their special ability in order. We're just gonna talk about a couple of these now because they won't make sense to you. Uh, the treasury committee gets to, since they have a dollar bill here, they get to embezzle or earmark a dollar and take it from the city budget. And when they do that, later on, they can place it on a building to make it cheaper and more appealing to build. Uh, the Union Committee, uh, we got these favor cards, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, the Union Committee gets to keep two of these. Everyone gets dealt two at the beginning of the round here. Everyone has to discard one, except the Union Committee gets two. We'll talk about the other special abilities here in just a moment. So what are these favor cards we just talked about? This is the main way that you're going to be scoring points in the game. Uh, so everyone's going to start with two of these, and then every round everyone's going to get one, and everyone except the Union Committee will be able to keep uh, one of them. Now, we have the safety demand. So we look at these cards here, and we see that there's a building icon. This is a building type favor. And so essentially, the, uh, the public safety uh, chief of staff comes to you and says, hey, look, I need you to build me a police station. If a police station is built in the city, you're going to get one point and you can play at the end of the round. Or if you get a fire department, you can get one point. If you do both, sure, you're going to get one, one point for each of those and then a third point. So if you do both of these, you're going to get three points and you'll be able to throw this down at the end of the round because it's a building type. There's other types of cards called favor cards. Notice that's a handshake. This is residential infrastructure. These ones can be played anytime they're done where their building cards have to wait to the end of the round. These special favors are, this person wants you to activate a residential zone. We'll talk about zones here in a minute. But if you activate that, right away you can play this card and get a point. If you fill an entire residential zone, you'll get plus one. And if you activate all the residential zones, you'll get a plus two. So we're at the end of the committee phase. Everyone's done their, their special ability. And we go to the council meeting phase. At the beginning of the game, the board has these actually actually on the printed board itself. They're not cards, they're just there to start the city. Well, notice that we have different zones. We have uh, two commercial zones, two residential zones, two industrial zones, and a gray zone. This gray zone is given to us by the government. It costs nothing extra uh, other than the building cost to build there. We don't have to pay for power. It's all pretty much just given to us and powered up. Now, on the, uh, the, the council meeting phase, everyone's going to have a chance to do one of three things. They can try to relocate a building. They can sell back a building or they can build a building. At the beginning of the game, obviously most everyone's gonna be building a building. So let's look at those. You can see we have four piles of buildings, one squares, two squares, three squares, and four squares. These dark blues are the advanced. After we fill up this entire gray region that we have on the board, we can get to these better tiles. But for now, the beginning tiles are this light blue and we get to look at these buildings to possibly build. Now during this phase, going in player order as shown in the committees, people are gonna vote Again, you could build, sell, or relocate a building. In this case, everyone's going to build because it's the first round. And they go in order. What they're going to do is take their token, and they're going to say which building they want to build and maybe why. And let's talk about this. So this person votes, I want to build the museum, the blue player there. Uh, it's going to cost $2 to build this onto the gray zone. Um, and it's going to cost one white collar worker and one goods. And then later, we're going to get one community and $2. And you see how this works. Now that everyone has proposed which building they want to build, again, going first turn to through, everyone is going to place their, their little black voting marker on voting for somebody else's building. And you cannot 
vote for your own. Also, when you're building one, no uh, tile can have more than one sort of uh, proposal. So this person who's blue cannot vote for his own, so he must vote for someone else's. You might go, hey, Orange, I, I like your idea for the workshop. I'm going to vote for yours. Now, after everyone has had one turn to vote, um, the person who has the treasury committee can use their special ability. If you remember, the treasury got to embezzle a dollar to use for later. Well, this is when they can use that. After everyone has had a chance to vote with one of their people, he gets to use this if he wants. Now, normally, he'd probably this is one time where you can vote for your own. You can use the embezzle, the embezzle thing to vote for your own. But nobody voted for his, so he's not going to win anyway. So maybe he goes, you know what, I like the museum. I'm going to put this here. So instead of this costing $2, it's only going to cost $1, which is going to make it uh, more apt to be built. After the person from the Treasury Committee voted there for with his special vote, the person on the Executive Committee gets a second vote, and they can vote on any plan, even their own in this case. And Yellow goes, hey, I like my own plan. This time I can vote for mine because I have that extra special ability. And now everyone is done, and we have all the votes in there. So we have uh, this one has two votes. This one has two votes. This one has two votes, and it has an embezzlement. But by voting, these three are tied. Uh, with a five, four- or five-player game, only three of these are going to be built. And with a two-player game, two- or three-player game, only two of them can get built. So in this case, three of them are going to get built, which essentially are these three, because these ones didn't even get any votes. If there were more ties, the person who's in the election committee gets to break the ties. And so the election committee is going to now build these buildings and execute these plans in the order that they want. Now with five players, the budget started with $9. So the, execute, the election committee is going to place one of these. And again, we're trying to fill up the, the, gray, the gray set first because... It's already powered. We don't have to spend money or resources to power it. So now remember, this was the one that had the earmarked dollar. It would normally cost $2, but since the person, the Treasury Committee, put their earmarked dollar on it, it's one less. So this is only $1. So we'd bring the budget down from 9 to 8. They then build the police station. Now they can go any way. They can go like this. They could, they could really go any way, but in this case, he puts it like this. And the police station is $2, so it goes down to 6 And the third building that, that was getting built was the workshop, and it's just $1. So now those are built per the election committee. Now we just finished the council meeting phase and now we're going to the production phase. So we're gonna start activating some of these buildings. Take note, we have four blue collar workers, two white collar workers, no community levels, and one good to, to here in the first round. Now in turn order from first to fifth, we're going to activate one at a time. When we get to the end, we're just gonna keep going till we can't activate anymore, meaning we're out of buildings or out of resources. Now remember that the transport committee, his special abilities, he gets to do two actions instead of one. Okay, so the transport committee gets to do two activations at once. So they're going to activate this building here, and what they're going to do is just put two blue collar workers on it, because it shows that we need two blue collar workers. We don't uh, actually get this yet. We're just activating it this time. Now the, the the transport committee actually gets to go twice, if you remember. So he's going to also activate this one, which is uh, a blue collar worker and a dollar. So we subtract a dollar from the city budget as well. And the last person here puts a white collar worker there. And we are out of resources, and we don't have anything more to put here. So now that we're, we're pretty much done, that phase ends as, as sort of the activation part of the production phase. Now you can see we put all of our people to work this time, which is good. And someone says, oh, I've got a favor card I want to play, and they put it down like this. And we see that this player had a favor card with a handshake, means they could play it anywhere. And they have no blue collar workers unemployed, because everybody was employed, so they're going to get a point. We'll say that was blue went, and then they move up a point. Next, we will do the unemployment report. So, because we put everybody to work, we look at the, the blue side here, and there's zero left, so we're going to add two blue-collar workers to our town because, hey, everyone's got to work, the word is out that our city has a lot of jobs, and two more people come to get jobs. If for some reason we had one, two, or three people still standing here looking for work, well, we would get some criminal activity because, hey, they're hanging around with nothing to do, they cause some crime. Same with the white-collar workers. We have zero left, so a new guy moves into the city. Same reason. Now, if we have too many white-collars standing around after everything's activated, they'll start to get out of the city because there's not enough jobs. Now we do, we activate the buildings. We're still in the production phase. Again, going in turn order, people get to, uh, it pretty much doesn't matter turn order. You can just kind of all, all do it at the same time if you like. In this case, look at this. This is going to get us a goods and a dollar into the budget. So let's show you how this happens. First of all, the worker comes back into the city housing. We get a goods to go in there and we get a dollar back to the budget. And you do that pretty much for all of the, the items here. So at the end of this production phase, we now have two, four, six blue collar workers, three white collar workers. We have two community levels, two goods, one pollution, and our budget's back up to $8. Now we're gonna go into the monitoring phase. 
In the monitoring phase, we take basically the bad stuff that happens and subtract from it the good stuff that happens. So we have one pollution, this is criminal activity. By the way, if you get seven of either of these, pollution or criminal activity, the game ends. So it is slightly semi-cooperative where you're trying to work together to make sure that pollution or criminal activity doesn't get too high. So you have a total of one cubes in these two bad boxes, and you have four goods and community level total. So it's one here, four here, to three here. So we would get two more white collar workers that come to our uh, our city, and they would put in our workforce just above with all the rest of the white collar workers. Now, as you can see, if things were slided towards the bad things, people start to leave because pollution's high, crime's high, and people would leave. But when things are good, people come to your city, and that's sort of how the uh, monitoring phase works. Finished monitoring, and now we're going on to the turn end and replenishing. And at this time, people can play those building favor cards. Someone might throw this one down, say, hey, look, it's a building one. I can play it now at the end of the round. This one, the safety person wanted me to build a police station. We built the police station. I'm going to get one point, and they would move up one point on the scoring track. Everyone can throw down as many as they want that they actually can fulfill. The last thing you do in a replenishing phase is you can move everybody down. So essentially, everyone has spent one full round in their position, so they show that they have been there for one full term going into the A section. And then everyone can only, after a whole nother round goes, um, they can be in there for B section. Now, the election committee uh, has to basically make a change each round, but they can only make the, the smallest change uh, available. In this case, uh, maybe they would change these two here. So someone would be in the union committee and someone would be there. If someone was already on, on let's say, a second term, for example, these guys have to get moved. They don't have a choice. And these guys would have to get sort of flopped into here. So this is sort of a, a way of, of changing around the positions throughout the game. The first one that gets to 11 points is the winner. All right, well, there's city council. What interested me in this game in the first place was the city building and the negotiation aspect, because those are two things that I like in games. Uh, the city building, I'll, I'll talk about the thing I liked first. Um, the things I liked about it was it did really feel like we were sitting on a committee trying to build the city. And over time, you get to see how it evolves, how you're trying to run off crime and put everybody to work, and you're talking about what you're voting for, and it's, it's really interesting that, right? In fact, the first game that we played, we almost lost. We got six cubes of criminal activity gone. If one more came, we all would have lost. So we all focused in and figured out, well, how do we not get these? How do we get rid of these? Let's put, let, let's build a prison. Let's put, let's try to put everybody to work so that there's no more cubes that come up. And we did, able, we were able to kind of like not lose the game and someone ended up winning. So it was cool how we had to work together to ensure that didn't happen. I like that aspect of it. I like how when you're, you're, you're jockeying for what you're going to do, whether you're building or relocating or selling a building, um, that you're kind of going after your own little goals that nobody knows why you're really doing what you're doing uh, and everyone gets super paranoid that hey why is he doing that he's doing that because he probably has a card that will give him a point because he has a special interest group that wants him to do that so that part of it's kind of interesting too uh, the negotiation um, I wish there was more of it um, you know the only thing you have to negotiate for really is your vote um, which doesn't give you a whole lot of flexibility. It's like, hey, you, you vote for me, I'll vote for you. Or, hey, you do this action first, I'll do this one, and then next time you can repay me. And, and I just wish there was more open-ended negotiation, more things, more levers to pull. Uh, because, you know, you could try and negotiate, and, and it's, it's, it, it was a little part of the game. I know it's supposed to be more, but for our group who loves negotiation, we just couldn't find a way to make it more. Uh, so I wish that was more part of the game. Also, like, the... the, the the flow of the game felt a little slow to me. Um, you know, I played it enough time so that we didn't have to look at the rule book even once to play. I wanted to make sure that we got the flow of the game. It wasn't just me. Um, but for some reason, it just felt a little sluggish, a little slow. Um, There's just something there. It just, it didn't grab me. I mean, I, it's a good game. Don't get me wrong. It's not a terrible game. It's a good game. It's thought provoking. It's fun. Uh, it's not negative review. The problem is I play hundreds of games a year. Um, and so it has to be extraordinarily good for me to give it a very high mark. So is it a bad game? No. Is it a great game? No. It's a good solid game if you like city building, uh, if you like uh, semi-cooperative, if you like having hidden goals, if you like feeling like you're building something, uh, this might be something you want to check out. It just didn't blow my doors off, which I was hoping it was going to, mostly because the negotiation wasn't as big a part as I hoped it was going to be, but it still might be interesting for you to check out City Council. Hey, one more thing before you go. If you're about to drop a comment on this YouTube page for this video and you're expecting interaction or a personal response from me, uh, I recommend the place to do that is at my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash thegameboygeek because I don't get notified when YouTube videos get comments on the Dice Tower Network because I don't own the channel. So if you want to interact with me directly, I'll see you at my Facebook page.
Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. <laughs>